Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. We're talking about the garden plant that keeps on giving. Yes, it's zucchini we're going to talk about. Stay tuned and learn more. I'm Stacy Tapes. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. I'm in my tiny little zucchini patch and boy, zucchini are a beautiful thing to grow because they bless you with so much fruit when they're healthy, so much that you get produce every day and you can usually share it with friends and family as well. Uh, these zucchini plants here are a variety called Black Beauty. They're an heirloom variety and there's a whole bunch of different sizes of zucchini fruit technically. On each of these plants there's one, two, three that are stretched out here over the space of about two meters. As you likely know, when I grow everything in my garden, I put it on drip lines. So there's one drip irrigation line running down this row, and my drip irrigation has a space every 30 centimeters or every foot. So I've gone two feet apart or 60 centimeters apart to plant my plants, and that makes for very dense planting. They do great with a 60 centimeter spacing, and there's no tolerance for weeds. You might also notice here that I've got coffee sacks on the ground, and so coffee sacks are all around, and there's just a small little square where that drip is and where the plant is started, and as a result, there's no weeds to deal with. It's just zucchini love and coffee sacks all the way around. So let's just talk about a few different details about harvesting and things need to go to get rolling with zucchini. Honestly, they're very forgiving, they're very tolerant, and they're vigorous. They're a beautiful plant to grow. So zucchini are truly abundant plants, and uh, I was just gonna harvest a few different zucchini, and I wanna note while I'm doing this with you, all I'm using is a simple knife. You can twist zucchini off. Sometimes it'll damage the fruit a bit. Just don't cut through the stem. So that's kind of a, a medium-sized zucchini. The other great thing about zucchini is they're kind of good to eat at all sizes of maturity. I just want you to see that on this one plant, there's one that's quite a bit smaller, and then I'm just gonna show you how tiny it is that it was starting out as it still has the flower on it. So look at that little baby, hey? The flower was pollinated. That means that was a female flower. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And the zucchini is just getting going and as it develops, the flower will pop off. So that's off the same plant all in one day, three different stages and ages of zucchinis. Now I'm just gonna go down here and just show you on the same plant here as well. I didn't pick for two days just so I could do this video. There's another one that size and uh, still on the same plant, right? So that's five zucchini from that plant. Oh, I'm not done. And here's a, another one and another one, just to give you a sense of the variety, okay? So that's one plant after just two to three days of not having harvested. And I'll just cruise down here a little further, see what else there is, some medium-sized ones. I'm kind of partial to zucchini that are this size. That's kind of my favorite size. I can use half of one of those for a personal omelet in the morning. I just pan fry it in a vegetable oil, or in, sorry, in an olive oil. Now let's just think about some recipe ideas with zucchini. My mouth starts to water thinking about this. By the way, they're not just water and fiber. These are nutrient dense fruits. They have potassium, they have manganese, um, they have quite a few vitamins like B12 and riboflavin as well. My goodness, they're good for you. If you slice them like a centimeter thick and put them in a little bit of balsamic vinegar and olive oil, they're amazing grilled on a barbecue. So I don't know if you ever tried that before. I'll cube them up, put them with olive oil and salt in the oven and roast them. You can use a spiralizer if you're not that fancy with a spiralizer. Just use a vegetable peeler and peel it off like noodles. One minute in boiling water and you've got an alternative to veggies, or sorry, an alternative to pasta as a noodle. There's just so much health and nutrition to give away. Do you know that they'll take on the flavor of different spices you put with them? And maybe you've tried a zucchini pie before, but if you put in the sugar and the cinnamon and the spices you would with an apple pie, you can actually make a zucchini pie, tell people it's an apple pie, and most will believe it if you get the texture right. I was in the middle of harvesting, so I just want to see if there's any more that are in here. And there's flowers all over too, so I know that there's going to be more to come. Oh, there's more down here. There we go. So look at that. A few more. Now that's a beautiful sign of the flower that's come in 
on that one. It's just gorgeous. These are actually edible flowers as well. So if you want to just show off to people, you could take a flower when it's open because it's kind of the end of the day here. My flowers are all closed up now. But if you get an open flower, it could be about that size. Some of these flowers during the day, my honeybees, up to five or six of them are inside one flower at a time pollinating and on that topic of pollination let's just talk about whether you need more than one zucchini plant for them to be fertile and a little bit about their flowers and pollination so here we're just looking inside a zucchini plant at the uh, flowers that are growing and i want you to see this because it's really cool zucchinis are self pollinating which means they pollinate themselves they have male and female flowers all of these flowers in the middle of this plant are male isn't that crazy so this is a male, 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 and this is a male. This is a very masculine zucchini plant. We'll call him uh, Zach, Zach the zucchini. Um, down here, maybe you cannot see it, but there's two tiny little zucchinis here with flowers on the end. And when there's a flower on the end of a zucchini, that was a female flower. So all these six different male flowers pollinated these two females. There's actually another female over here, a mid-sized zucchini about as long as my hand. So it looks like on this one, all the male flowers are standing upright in the middle. They're going to attract the bees and the pollinators in first. And then they're going to go down those bees and pollinators to pollinate down lower inside the canopy of the zucchini. And they'll go from Zachary to the little girl, um, female flowers down below. So you can plant one zucchini plant, it'll be self-fertile, and it will be pollinated as a result of its male and its female flowers. And in that way, you don't need a bunch of zucchini plants, certainly to satisfy yourself, because they're very productive. One can be enough. You don't need pollination with another plant. So let it be known. Aren't zucchini a great topic and a great veg to grow, even though they're a fruit? I still call them a veg. They're amazing because they grow in such a variety of soils. They're very vigorous. They produce for a couple months straight. You can get all different sizes of fruit off of them and every one is edible at a very tiny or a very mature age. And you can think of all different things to do depending on the size of the zucchini you're harvesting. They're just so good. You can go back every day and get another surprise. It never stops amazing me how wonderful zucchini plants are. Let's just talk for a second about getting going with zucchini at the start of the year, probably in uh, late spring, early summer. They'll take off and grow very quickly. You can start zucchini from a seed right in your garden, or you can start it from a start. So you might buy a start, you might plant a start yourself from a seed, and when it gets, you know, 10 or more centimeters tall, and it's got not just primary, but secondary and tertiary leaves, it's a good time to put it out. In my area where I live, very often slugs will come at night when it's cool or moist, and they'll feast on little baby zucchini plants and just like loggers, knock them over like trees, and you come out in the morning and they're gone. So that can be a little tough. What I'll do is just grind up in my hands some eggshells from my chicken's eggs, and I'll just put a little perimeter of eggshells around that baby zucchini start for its first week. Those eggshells serve a, as a beautiful barrier from the slugs because they won't cross the eggshells the crunchiness on their belly hurts. So they're just like, yeah, I'm not going there. So eggshells provide a great uh, perimeter to protect and safeguard those zucchini for the first few days. So you can start them from a seed. You can start them from a start. Just put them in at least, uh, you know, 60 centimeters, maybe as much as 90 centimeters apart at a drip on irrigation. If you have an irrigation line or just hand water them, overhead would be the least efficient, but it'll work. They're very tolerant of the way they get their moisture. And if you put good organic fertilizer around there, take a look at my organic fertilizer, how to make it uh, video, and that'll show you what to put down there. It'll be slow release and one good fertilization as it gets growing with a couple big leaves, it'll have all the nutrition it needs for the whole growing season to produce everything you need. We'll talk about a few more things like hardening off your zucchini when it comes into fall. People often think about storing gourds or different plants in the gourd family for winter. Pumpkins and heavy thick skinned squashes like maybe butternut or acorn squashes. But did you know that you can store a zucchini in the winter as well? I'll tell you how, it's very simple. You want it to develop a thicker skin than it normally would have. So you gotta wait for the last harvest of zucchini near the close of your growing season. For me, that's usually in mid to late September. It's not freezing yet at night where I live, but it's starting to cool off. And the zucchini starts to get a darker, greener cover on it, if it's a green variety. This one's called Black Beauty, but they get dark and black if they're bigger and more mature. The skin will start to thicken off, and when the plant 
plant is starting to lose its life and its energy and it's pushing all of its last resources into its final few zucchini, they'll often be bigger than this, maybe up to 40, 50 centimeters long. The skin's dark and thick. They've hardened off on the vine. The vine won't be moist and wet, it'll be dry and brittle. You'll snip it off, don't tear it or damage this in any way. As long as there's no scars, no blemishes on that zucchini, it's an ideal candidate for fall and winter storage. The next thing you want to do, this isn't essential, but it's helpful, is if you've got a, a blemish-free exterior and you just take water with a bit of vinegar in it, put a cloth in it, or just dip it right in the water vinegar bath, that'll kind of disinfect any problems or cut spots. And then if you put it on cardboard in a dry place, I have some shelving in, in an outbuilding. I just put it on cardboard in an outbuilding. And I've picked zucchini in late September and stored it and eaten it at New Year's. So that's all of October, November, December. Three months of storage in an outbuilding, no temperature or climate control, just a building that doesn't freeze. And I've stored zucchini for three months. You just carve off that thick skin and everything inside is good for roasting or baking, however you wish. Zucchini, it's a magical fruit. So I want you guys to now check out this variety of zucchini. This is a, a, a hybrid, not an heirloom variety. The last one was called Black Beauty and that was an heirloom variety, but this is a hybrid and it's called Gold Rush. So there's a big Gold Rush zucchini and a medium sized one as well. And I gave away some from this plant today also. You can see all these little female flowers are turning into little zucchinis as well. So beautifully straight, gorgeous, bright, vibrant colors in the garden. They offset against all the other leaves. It's like an art project that you get to eat. So we're just gonna be appreciative of those little fellas. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the seeds inside and can you grow your own zucchini plants from your own seeds? Good question, I'm glad you asked. So here I am with these little Gold Rush zucchinis that I just picked up. Oh, I heard a name today for when you use a spiralizer or a peeler and you turn strips of zucchini into noodles. They're called zoodles. So you can offer your kids zoodles and they might be more excited than telling them that you're gonna boil strips of zucchini. Um, can you save your own seeds from zucchini? It's a kind of a complex question to answer because normally if you have any heirloom plant, you can save the seeds from that plant. A tomato, a potato, um, tatsoi, which I've got growing right here. You can see a tatsoi flower there in the foreground, chard, beets, carrots. I save all those types of seeds. I'm a huge advocate and I love saving my own seeds, but can you save Zucchini seeds, well you can, but it's kind of confusing because even though they're able to self-pollinate, they'll cross-pollinate with anything else in their family. Not cucumbers, but any pumpkin or other squash or gourd they'll cross-pollinate with. So you'll pick this um, zucchini if it was an heirloom variety and you think you can save the seed from it, but it's cross-pollinated with something that might be 500 meters away, half a kilometer away. It cross-pollinated with some carving jack-o-lantern. The zucchini doesn't show that it cross-pollinated with a carving jack-o-lantern but the DNA will change in the seeds inside. Now I'm gonna back up again. This is a hybrid variety of zucchini. You couldn't save its seed, but you could save the seeds of an heirloom variety, but it could have cross-pollinated with something, so then it gets weird, because you've got this unique um, kind of franken food from the cross-pollination that happens. So the only way you can do it that I understand you could, I've never tried it, would be you'd have to identify your female flower on your zucchini, where a zucchini is gonna set, and you'd have to tie it shut until the day you're gonna personally pollinate it so that no other pollinator can get in there that's been out there that would cause a cross-pollination. Then the day that you'd wanna pollinate it, you'd untie that female flower. You'd go to the same plant and with a Q-tip or your finger or a paintbrush, get some pollen from a male flower on that plant, pollinate the female flower, <gasps> tie it up again. Now you've hopefully not let it have any babies or fertility action with any other species within its family. And as a result, it should be true to itself because its own male flower pollinated its own female flower and there's no other dads in the house. You'd have to keep it tied up till that flower falls off. And then in theory, if you indicated on that specific zucchini, maybe with an elastic band or a marker, this is the one that I watchfully, personally fertilize the flower on, you'd be able to, in the future, let that grow to a very mature zucchini, more mature than when you'd want to eat it, and then cut out the seeds dry them out and you'd have your own zucchini seeds. Personally, I just buy packs of the seeds that I want to grow because that sounds like too much work, but now you know. <laughs>
So everybody, that's almost a wrap. We've covered a lot about the mighty zucchini today on Sustainable Stace. We've talked about getting them going from seeds and from starts and on spacing, harvesting, way to store them for the end of the growing season, different ways to prepare them in the kitchen when you've got such an abundance to share, heirloom and hybrid, pollinating, saving seeds, lots of information. I hope it's been super helpful. Thanks a lot for tuning in to Sustainable Stace. Hopeful, helpful, healthy. And if you've been watching it on YouTube, can you go down there in your bottom corner, click on the subscribe button, and then you'll keep on getting um, an email every time we put out a new resource that's hopeful, helpful, and healthy. Until next time, thanks a lot.